Renegade Live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. So we are here tonight to paint with you. You guys, my husband Sean is in the background here to answer any questions as we go. So please pop on in any questions that you have about Dixie Bell or anything that we're doing tonight. I'm happy to answer those for you as we go. Um, so let's see. You guys, we started on this table a couple of weeks ago together. I did a live all about how just how to paint whites because there is technique and information just on painting whites. So we did this table a couple weeks ago. I did have a week off in there because um, um, my son had a surgery. So we're going to continue working on this tonight. And I love these little tables as class examples because I can work my way around it and each side I've got to a different stage. So by the time we're done, you guys will get a complete finish out of this one little table here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this table here. You guys are also going to welcome tonight. We are trying something new. Uh, we I'm live on YouTube tonight for the first time. So welcome to all of my YouTubers. I'm happy to have you guys here. Um, okay, so we're going to start with this table here. And like I said, uh, we painted this live on camera two weeks ago and I showed you guys how to prepare. Um, so we primed this table with uh, two coats of Dixie Belle Boss. Dixie Belle Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer. And the reason for that is this little table's oak. Oak is known to be a bleeder. So oak is a very, uh, is a wood that's very rich in oils and the oils will seep through uh, chalky style paints because they are porous. It will seep through the paint and it can discolor your paint over time. So we did prime this with two coats of Dixie Belle Boss. And then I've got two coats of Dixie Belle drop cloth on here, which is this rich, creamy white color. So that's where we are right now. Two coats of Boss, two coats of um, Dixie Belle drop cloth. Two and two? Two, two, two and two. Right. Two, two and two. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys what I did to get to my next step. So I felt like <laughs> this little table was a little bit plain right here. Sorry, I just thought it was funny. Brittany said, how many electronics are we taking? Oh my gosh, time? you don't even want to see what it looks like right now. <laughs> oh it's, man. We're a little scared. We're I need little, like mic booms. We're, and, we're yeah. scared right <laughs> it's like now. A, it's like a press conference. Yeah, it is. I, I'm, I'm sweating tonight. I did, I did load up on the deodorant tonight just in case. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for everyone in our studio we audience. appreciate you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We're really going to have to work on those uh, yeah. sound effects. Yeah. Okay, so I felt like this little table was a little plain. It's got these frames here, and I, I feel like every time there's frames on a piece of furniture, I'm supposed to be framing something, right? So I like to add something. So on this one, I chose to add resin castings. So I'm pulling these out of my mold right now. I cast these in a two-part casting resin called Amazing Casting Resin. Um, I do have a link for this. If you go to my, the link in my, my profile on Instagram, the first page I have pinned on YouTube, and I'll put it in the description on, I'm sorry, the first post on Facebook, and I'll put it in the description on YouTube. Um, and I, I, I have videos on how to cast these molds. So I just cast these right before I got on camera. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to show you that when you first cast casting resin, it's nice and flexible, okay? I have flex to this. Once this fully cures, which only is in about 10 minutes, this is gonna start hardening and I will never get this level of flex back again. So while it's nice and bendy, um, because I've got a curved surface right here, I went ahead and attached these molds to my surface. And all I use to do that is I use tight bond quick and thick. Anytime I'm attaching a mold to a piece, I like tight bond quick and thick. This is a hardware store item. Um, you can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's in the adhesive section. I tell you, since you're getting so good at casting, you might want to throw in there casting for a new husband because uh, oh is, yes, this is daunting. Oh, casting for some parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, today we're going to be casting for uh, <laughs> mailman number one. <laughs> I don't mean that's my husband. <laughs> that sounded bad. Huh? All right, so I just coated the back of this uh, casting in my tight bond quick and thick, and then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this mold onto my furniture piece. And I kind of played with it to make it fit. I, I, I hit them out just a little bit of a curve. Okay, and see how, see how that bendiness is really important at this stage? Got a little bit excess glue on here that I smeared. I'm just going to wipe that away with my rag. Um, it does, The glue does dry clear, but I try not to leave any around because it just makes an uneven surface. 
Okay, so any excess glue that pops out, you can go around and just kind of clean that up with your finger or rag. I'm going to go ahead and seat this mold nicely into my Ooh. piece. I like one of these ideas. I need to cast for a pool boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe a yeah, landscaper or two. Maybe a sprinkler installer, yeah. yeah. Um, you guys, I do have videos and I have a blog on my website all about how to cast mold. So if you're interested in that, you can go ahead at brushbybrandy.com. There's a an entire blog post on that. You know, I do feel bad in that YouTube, it looks like I'm 20 feet away from you, but I'm really not. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, you guys, see? like with any live video feed, we will learn how to uh, get this better with time. You're welcome to come in here closer if you need to. If you want to get oh all, wait, you did put deodorant on. All Hold on. Of, all of I'll get on face. in there. Yeah. Okay, this one's still a little bit soft. Like I said, I cast these right before I got on camera tonight. This one's still not ready to come out. You got a door opening. But I repeated this process just on this other side in the frame. And watch, we're gonna fast forward. What? I know. That's why I love these little tables. This is what I end where I end up. Okay, so this is my same process that we just did with my two coats of boss. Two coats of drop cloth. My molds are all attached with my type one quick and thick. And now we all are right, going Sheila. to. Sheila confirmed. It does uh, look like we're way in there. Oh, you guys got double vision there. It looks like we're super far away. Well, especially when you leave. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, this, Hi. this is unacceptable. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out. Okay, so from here. Once I have my molds attached, I want to coat them in my paint. Now you have a couple options. You can always uh, coat your molds in your paint before you attach them if you want. I just go ahead and paint them once they're attached, just so it looks like a part of my furniture piece. Peggy, yes, I am bendy. I'm like a gymnast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Sean, not, not the 10 tripods. Okay, the, um, the molds take the paint really loose into the ground. Okay, how do I? Did it go off? Are you sure you want to end your live video on Instagram? Just end it. Oh man, all right. Okay. Can you do me a quick favor while I check yours? Check that. All right, where? All right, so we're... sorry guys. All right, let me know if you're on. Sorry for the camera action issues. Okay, so I know YouTube appears to be up. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. Technology is fun. We are live. All right, here we camera. go, guys. Throw me some thumbs up. So from here, now I've got everything coated in my Dixie Bell drop cloth, and I just gave it a light sanding with my Dixie Bell sanding sponge. And all this does is it takes my paint finish, and it's going to make the final result all that much smoother. And you'll know. Once you once you actually do it, it takes down that chalky feeling of the paint. It just gets rid of any dust that might have settled in your paint and gives you this super smooth finish. This is the finish I want to seal. And then I'll just take a damp rag and I'll tack off any dust that I created from that light sanding. Somebody throw me a comment, even if I have to go pound sand, just uh, tell me. Uh, you know. Swipe left or right and you'll get your comments back. Yeah, yeah. I realize that. Just checking to make sure they update. Okay, now I'm taking my Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat, and I love satin. I always recommend satin if you're just starting out with clear coats because it's very user-friendly. It's almost, it's a, it's a nice thick formula, almost like a gel. And um, I find people kind of freak out when they see it like that, but what it does is it helps your clear coat to stay put, and it gives you a little bit of playtime in it, meaning it stays open so that you can brush it to a nice, smooth, clean finish. You'll notice I'm using a brush on this instead of the Dixie Belle sanding sponge. And the reason for that is because I've got a lot of crevices. Um, and the brush, I can make sure that I'm brushing out any excess clear coat from those crevices. So that's not sitting. I, you can get pooling, puddling, drips, a lot of stuff when you've got really detailed furniture pieces. And this is detailed because I added those moldings and also because it has some original to the piece. So I'm getting angry face. Well, I got one angry face. But I'm not getting comments updated on either one. So I apologize, guys. I don't know what's going on. What did you swipe? I did. Last thing I show is uh, Dana saying hi to Aaron. Really weird. 
Here, I'll give you this one. I'm getting a lot of the... That's right. Ah, All okay. right, we're back. Now, YouTube, I don't see anything, but I'm not swiping on that okay. one again. Okay, so this is... All right, there we go. I'm brushing on my clear coat. I'm brushing it on with my Dixie Belle Mini. Um, the Dixie Belle Mini is a synthetic bristle brush. Thank you, everyone. Let me get right up here around this lip. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> well, know, I'm here. I know. So. I don't think we're going to be here. I kind of want to leave right now. Yeah, I do, too. <laughs> I'm oh, calling it a day. It's stressful, guys. Always stressful. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I don't think you ever get used to going live on camera. You never, ever, ever get less nervous, not nervous, whatever it is. Okay, so I've used my Dix Build Mini, and I brushed out this, this layer of clear coat. It's just a very thin layer. This is just to protect my paint finish. I've got a very nice, clean paint finish, and this could be a blended or decorative paint finish you did. But either way, I know that I'm going to add some details here and I want to protect my paint finish. Um, it could be waxes that you're putting over top. Uh, in this case, we're going to do a paint wash over the top. It could be glazes you're putting over the top. Um, but I want to protect this paint finish. So whatever I put over, if I decide I don't like it, it's going to be wipeable, you guys. So That's a quick couple things. Number one, your base color. Uh, Dixie Belle drop cloth. Now, if you're going to age molds, how do you do that? We're going to do that right now. There we go. So we're getting there. We're going to put a finish. But I wanted to take you guys through how I got here and what I put underneath the decorative finish that we're gonna do on this tonight. So it's got two coats of Dixie Belle drop cloth and then one coat of satin clear that I just brushed on with using my brush. And you guys see how I can come back over this. Um, lighter colors are more forgiving with clear coats than darker colors. Um, but, but because satin clear has a nice long open life, I can come back and just perfect this. If I notice I'm getting a drip somewhere, I can come back and just take my brush and clean it up. And that's kind of why you want the brush on a more detailed surface. All right, you guys. So now, that so now how do you get, just to take it back a notch because of the tech uh, issues. Uh, sorry. How do you get, as far as putting on the paint and clear coat over your mold to not get drips, how do you do that? Use your brush. Use your brush. And you're going to use the tips of your bristles and you're going to dig it into the crevices of your mold. And then once it's nice and covered, let's go back to the side we put the mold on in the first place. And then I can kind of show you guys again. I know we had some camera issues. So this is my Dixie Belle drop cloth. These are the molds that I just, just painted on camera tonight. So we're going to just go ahead and paint them again. And okay. did you sand before you clear coat? I did. Okay. I did. I did a light brushing with my Dixie Belle um, sanding sponge. So you'll notice I just put a little bit of water on when you've got... Um, really detailed surfaces. The little bit of water can help the paint find those low spots. Um, it almost thins it out a little bit so that it mm. can kind of drip into those low spots. Now you don't want drips. I'm not saying that. I just mean so the paint itself is not so thick that it has a hard time. And then I'm going to use my bristles and I'm going to dig it all around the edges of this. But now I've got all these bumps from this kind of stippling with my brush that I can come back and clean that up. I'm not adding any paint. It takes very little paint to cover these molds, but I just want to clean it up. Now I pay attention to stuff that has a lot of detail on it. So once I brush it, I will still come back and check it in say five or 10 minutes. And I'm just going to look for if my paint has started running. Maybe it got down behind a little arm of this mold that I didn't see. And now after about five minutes, it's going to start working its way down the front of my piece. I want to try to catch that stuff while it's still wet. It's much easier to clean up while it's still wet. So I will check this in about five or 10 minutes and I'll just come back with my brush and clean up any areas that maybe have started to drip or what run or whatever they may be. But I do brush, I use a brush um, to put on my paint and my clear coat when I've got a lot of details on my piece versus using the applicator sponges. Okay, so that was putting our paint on. Here we put our clear coat on. Let's go over to where our clear coat is already dry. So now we're fast forwarded and I've got a nice dry clear coat on here. I feel like you planned this. I might have. I might have worked in advance tonight, you guys. I know. Okay. So when I'm doing it, we're going to do a color wash. And it's called a color wash because you're literally going to wash your piece in that color. We're going to use a lot of water, a diluted coat of paint. We're going to put it on and we're going to take it back off again. And it's going to find all these crevices and details. It's going to darken my paint color just a little bit. And it's going to take this from just a plain white paint finish and give it some interest. 
So when I'm layering on a color wash, I like to have a little bit of contrast. So let me show you the colors I've chosen as possibilities that I would put as a wash over this creamy white color. So I've got Dixie Belle Chocolate, which is a nice warm brown. I'm gonna turn these around so you can see them. This is Dixie Belle Gravel Road. And I love Gravel Road because when you thin it out, like we're gonna do with water, it's actually a very warm gray. It's got brown undertones in it. And then Collard Greens, I think is really pretty because it's this really deep green color. And just in these crevices right here, it would add a little bit of color, but without being an overtly green table. So I think that a, a color like that could be a really interesting option. But we're gonna go ahead and go with Gravel Road tonight. Thank you, Carla. Okay, so you have a couple options when you're going to do a color wash. You can either take your paint and pour it into a little dish and add a little bit of water and get a really diluted paint. But I just like to apply it straight from my container and then I'm going to use a mister bottle at the same time to move the paint around. Okay, so I'm going to take another Dixie Belle Mini. It's a, this is a clean brush. And I'm just going to get myself a little bit of paint. Okay, I'm going to get my surface nice and wet. Remember, this already has clear coat on it. And I'm going to start brushing this paint in. You're probably freaking out right now. Like I have this beautiful white finish and now I'm dirtying it up with this gray paint. It's almost going to act like a glaze, you guys. It's going to find all those low points for me. What was your base color again? My base color is Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. So the reason I ask? Yes. What's under the piece? A drop cloth. Ah, I know. This, hey, Mo. This is a new thing for me. Yeah. I don't usually use drop cloths, but I replaced my flooring recently. I'm actually trying to keep it kind of decent. Okay, so when I want to move the paint around, I don't want this paint to dry on here at all. At all. So I'm, I'm going to keep it wet. And when I want to move it around, I just add a little bit more water. So this okay? did have the clear coat that was this dry on it before you did this. Coat. It did have clear coat. And the reason it has clear coat, because I'm going to want to wipe this back, right? It looks a little scary right now. Looks like I painted it. Okay, and then I'm going to take a dry rag. So this is just a t-shirt, just a dry rag, and I'm going to start wiping this paint back. Okay, what can be fun about paint washes is, do you see how when I wipe back, I can get this kind of strie effect? Strie is a streaking. So I, how you wipe this paint off does matter. Because it's going to create lines in your paint. And I obviously want them to be going one direction, nice clean lines. If your paint starts to, you feel it start drying because it's such a thin layer, it's gonna wanna dry, add a little bit more water to it. Okay, and you can wipe back as much or as little as you want. You see how my gravel road has settled into those crevices? So now I'm gonna start cleaning this up. I've got most of my excess off. This is just done with the paint, you guys. And now I'm just gonna start cleaning this up. I'm keeping my wipes in linear strokes because it is gonna leave some of this paint on top of my drop cloth. It kind of dirties up my paint a little bit. Because I have that clear coat on here, I'm able to wipe this paint back off. So I'm washing my paint finish in this color. This is Dixie Belle Gravel Road. So why use the paint as opposed to a glaze? You could definitely use a glaze. So I tell you guys a lot that some of the products can do double duty. There are sometimes, and sometimes it's just personal preference. In this case. Or what you have in. Yeah. Uh, well, on number hand. one, I have a lot of extra color options in the paint line. So maybe you want to put blue around these details or green or yellow or whatever. Um, so rather than mixing yourself a custom glaze, I can just use a paint like this. I feel like I've wiped a little bit too much off on this side right here. I'm just going to come back and add it back in. And then I'm going to wipe this spot back off again. Now this is a water-based paint, you guys. So while it's fresh, before it's fully cured, it's really easy to just add a little bit of water and kind of reactivate the paint. And then I can wipe it again. So you've got a little bit of time to kind of play around with the paint just by using it Let's with water. It in there. So I've got a little spot down here that I took took me longer to get to. So I'm going to come down here and clean this up a little bit. But I like that it dirties up my paint a little bit. It's not that pure white anymore. It's gotten into all those crevices. I'm just cleaning up how I wipe this, and I'll kind of, I'm, I'm working small areas. You don't want to get too um, excited and 
brush the paint on over here and all around your table because it's going to take you a little bit of time to wipe it back and get it to the clean look that you might want to have. And you can see how wipeable that clear coat makes my paint. It makes it so that I can wipe this off. You can layer this too. So just because I'm putting paint on here doesn't mean I can't come back and still put um, waxes over the top or even glaze over that if I want. If I want to get a layered effect, I can do that too. So now I'm just cleaning up some of these areas I didn't wipe. I just re-wet my paint and then I can come back and wipe those too. Okay, so that's really pretty. I'm going to turn my table a little bit and we'll come and do this spot right here. It just looks a little bit aged. Whoops, that's not my brush. Did we lose YouTube completely? No. Oh, they're still Get there. a better angle over here. Oh, gotcha. I had to be uh, taking to school on that one. Yeah, get you can get get right get up in there. Get on in there. Get on up in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm using a lot of my water again and I'm just brushing my paint. I'm making sure I get it into the crevices, especially because that's where I actually want this paint. That's what I'm doing this for. You can do a color wash on a flat surface first or on a flat surface too. And they look great. You just want to make sure that when you're wiping your paint, if it's on a flat surface, that you're wiping in sure, long linear strokes. So I can take it like that and it kind of adds a streak down my down my piece. And then I would wipe everything in the same direction to get the same streaks everywhere. So when you're doing an open surface that doesn't have a lot of molds, just make sure that you're wiping in the same direction. <laughs> I'm trying to get it off of. There we go. Because this, this trim pod's no good to me. You're no good to me. That one's dead to me. No, you can hear. Okay, and then, I, I say. then I can start working on this area. And I'm just using my rag. My paint is still nice and wet, but I can add water as I need to. And I'm going to keep going with this even still. I'm going to show you guys a kind of a layering. Do you want to get some contrast in a color wash to layer the colors on? Um, so I've got it. It's a little dirtier here than I really want. So I've got a little more paint on my surface than I want. So I just add some water to that and I can come back and wipe it cleaner. Just that it's still such fresh paint that that little bit of water just reactivates my paint a little bit. See, some I'm, places I'm have like cheap. guest hosting. I think we should have like uh, guest camera people. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like somebody else just does your job for yeah, you? Is yeah, it's kind of, yeah. Is that delegating? You know what? Now you're just being a... You're being offensive. <laughs> yeah. It's not really cool. Okay, let me clean up up here under my rim a little bit. I got a little bit of extra paint up there. Same thing, just that little bit of water. And because it's such fresh paint and I've got a clear coat on here, just reactivates it for me and I can wipe it right back away. So I have really picked up all the details in these moldings. Just by putting a color wash of Dixieville Gravel Road over the top. Okay, if I want to add even more interest to this, I can add even another color still. So let's go ahead and wash this in even a different color. So when I'm doing multicolors, I like to look for contrast. So I did my first wash in Dixie Belle Gravel Road, which is a gray. So I probably don't want to do another gray on top of that. It's not going to be very noticeable. I'm going to choose the chocolate, which is kind of a brown color. So it's going to add a little bit of warmth to this. The chocolate might get in some areas that the gravel road didn't get into and I'll get a little bit of contrast there. I can wipe the chocolate just into certain areas if I just want to have um, a little bit of warmth added in. So like I said, you have as much control over this as you want. Oh, you know what? They do have a point. If I do give this up, how am I going to make the big bucks? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You'll probably make like the same that you're making now. I think it's like monopoly yeah, it's money. Yeah, like nothing. Yeah. Almost nothing. I just want to say the benefits suck. <laughs> yeah. Except California is a community property state, so. So half of Sean's money is my money. Wait a minute. 
Okay, so I can take this and I can add yet another color in here just by washing a contrasting color in. That's all right there, Fireball June. I knew what you meant. I know you uh, commented a little bit back, but misspelled that you were just too excited mentioning uh, she'd volunteer for being a cameraman. <laughs> it came over, it looked like it was Hebrew. <laughs> So now I've got some gray in spots. I've got some of my brown in spots. It really looks like it's genuinely aged. I've got a few brush strokes in here that my paint has stuck into and I really like that. I think it looks really pretty. And this could be as colorful as you want. So this, you could have taken, you know, honky tonk red and put it over this if you want. Although reds do turn a little bit pink when you thin them out with water. So beware of that. Probably shouldn't have used that as my example. Unless pink is the look you're going for. But I really, I actually like the little bit of brown. I've got gray over here, a little bit of brown. Some spots it's kind of mixed. I can also wet my rag. If I want to get into just a specific spot, but I don't want to wet my whole thing, I can just use the wet rag. This paint is so fresh, you guys. That water is all you need to take it back off again. And then I'm just making sure that all of my rubbing is in the same direction. So over here, I had a streak that was going sideways and I want them all going linear. So they're all in the same direction. All right, and it's really dirtied up that, that side, really pretty. But now I feel like my molds are so much more noticeable. All right, Tracy, hold on. I'm trying to get in there. I didn't want to get too close because she was working on. Can you do me a favor since I'm kind of rolling. Gonna come down. Yeah, thank you. I'm pretty sure they don't want to see the roller, but I'm just kidding. There, try that. Yeah, you see how yeah, it got into out. all these crevices right here. It really brings out the details. Some areas it's a little heavier, like right here. Some areas it's a little thinner. So from from here, um, what I would use to bring out the details of these moldings is just a little bit of gilding wax. So I'm going to grab my gold gilding wax and put some on here. All right, we'll see you later. Yeah, well, you can get all up in there. You're all in my face. It's bothering me. Man, you may have put deodorant on, but you didn't brush your teeth. Sorry, guys, I'm just grabbing some gilding waxes. And now that I've emphasized the low points on all my moldings, I'm going to use some gilding wax to kind of emphasize the high points. So I've got out a few different colors. So these are the new Dixie Belle gilding waxes, which will be available early next year. This color is bronze. And I could just hit the very high points with some of that bronze. That's really pretty. Can you do a wash with a metallic paint? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really pretty. No? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe you're misunderstanding me. I feel like I'm okay, not so picking up what you're putting down. I feel like the bronze, though, doesn't give me enough contrast with my um, color wash. So I'm going to use um, the new Dixie Belle Gilding Wax in gold. I think that'll be really pretty. And I would just hit the high points of this mold right here. And I just lightly brush it on using my finger. Let's try another one. This is zinc gray, which is going to be the steep gray. Mine melted a little bit in shipping. These are not the actual containers, you guys, so don't look at those. See how oh, pretty man. that is? Stacy's right on it. I need to learn a tap dance for the crowd. Uh, let's like not. when you step out. Wait, 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 wait. Do, 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 Who do, says do, I don't do, already? Do. We've all we've all been to the surface uh -huh. before. So that's the zinc gray. That's really pretty against these two colors, are too. Are you saying my car is small? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's your car. So I could use whatever color. I think I like the gold the best. So I'm just taking these back down while they're fresh and I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna go with the gold. And I don't want it on all of my molding because I want, this is kind of an aged look. So I want it to look like it's worn off in places. But yeah, the metallics are really pretty and they just leave a little bit of shimmer in your low points. And you can leave a little bit of them over top of your paint because you've sealed this paint. So you can wipe it back or as, as much or as little as you want. Actually, I have another piece. Where are we on time? 
have another piece behind me. We'll go, uh, we'll go Isn't ahead and that do like it. a rhetorical question. <laughs> yeah, because I'm always bad on time. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy, I tried to move past it. Didn't say a thing. What? <laughs> uh, what? When I made the comment about say my car small, you said it's not your car. <laughs> Did it? So this paint is still fresh enough that I can come back and clean up any areas that I want to clean up. So I'm just using my wet rag right here. It's got that clear coat over top, so my paint is nice and protected. Oh, that's gilding wax. Actually, that's why it's not coming off. So I'm liking this side over here, but I'm gonna flip you guys back to where we started, which is you can barely notice all of these moldings. And then that wash of paint over top that brings out all the details in it. I feel like you can see everything that I added to this piece much more now. So let's take a couple steps back. <clears throat> Base color. Dixie Belle drop cloth, two coats of Dixie Belle drop cloth. Then I put clear coat and then we did a, a color wash of Dixie Belle gravel road, which was the dark gray. Actual paint. Actual paint, a color Not wash. Glaze. This is water-based paint, you guys. So I can use, um, we'll go ahead and do it again on this one here. Um, I can use the paint just with a lot of water and it thins it out to where I can wash over my surface in the color. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, hold on. I'm going to pull back just a second. Yep, there we go. There's the broken stool. All right, I carry can on. Wash out. Yeah, I'm sitting on the ground right now because this is such a low piece. It's a small piece. I can wash over the surface in a color, and then I can wipe it back as much or as little as I want. That's, <laughs> That's a little right, heavier, yeah. but I can wipe it back as much or as little as I want and just leave it in those crevices. You know, that's a nice effect there where it's a little bit heavier. If you want it to more to come off, you just add a little bit more water. I just try to keep it nice and even all around. I don't want to have areas that's that are heavier. But it's a very similar process to glazing glazing. So um, like I said, you have more color options here and how someone suggested the metallics are also an option, but you can color wash in any of the Dixie Belle colors. And then you get all these color combinations and it just looks nice and aged in there. So I like this look here. This is kind of what I'm going for. Any spots I feel like I need to get better, I just come back with my rag a little bit wet and I'll just pay attention just to those spots. Yeah, so I think that's really pretty. So that is a color wash. It's literally washing your piece in a diluted layer of that color. This is my gilding wax that I'll put over the top. And you'll reseal this? Yes, and then I will come back and I will reseal it because now I've got new paint. So I've essentially sandwiched that. Uh, and that's the same thing I do with <clears throat> glazes too, you guys. Same thing I do with, with decorative glazes. Same thing I do with decorative waxes, whatever you choose for this process. And is this a client's piece? No, this is not. This is just me playing around. This is not, so I can do whatever I want to it. Those kind, of, those pieces are kind of nice, kind of good for the soul sometimes to just play around. So now I've got my low points emphasized with the paint. My high points are emphasized with that little bit of gilding wax. I'm going to work my way around this table and get the entire thing nice and even, so all these crevices are nice and dark. You know, I can darken them even still. I like to layer a lot of the products. So I will layer the paint with the glazes and gilding waxes. And um, by the time you're done, each layer adds a little bit of interest to your paint finish. Um, so I'm gonna continue to darken up these crevices. I'm gonna reseal this piece in another coat of clear. And then I took it from pretty plain, really ordinary, can't notice those moldings I just put on there to a little bit aged, looks like it tells a story. This spot right here is bothering me because my gilding wax smeared. I'm gonna have to get an oil to take that off. <clears throat> oils remove oils. The gilding waxes are oil-based, so the water doesn't quite do it, but I can take a little 
a dab of oil like Big Mama's butter and just rub it right there, it will take off that spot where my gilding wax smeared. So that's why that looks a little bit dirtier right there. So what are you thinking for the top? Hey, just out of my curiosity. son just handed me Big Mama's butter. So watch this. I feel like you ignored me. I, yeah, I did. This is Big Mama's butter, you guys. It's an oil. Oils remove oil. So even if I felt like I didn't like my gilding waxes, but where I just smeared them right there, I can take this oil and it removes the oil for me. So the paint is water-based. So water will remove the paint, but it will not remove the oil of the gilding wax where I smeared it. So that was Big Mama's Butter, you guys. That's a lifesaver. It also smells like oranges. Um, so I like to use that to freshen up the inside of my piece. All right, you guys, so I think I'm going to go ahead and get off. But that was the basics of a color wash. So make sure you seal your paint first, and then you can wash over top any paint color you want to get into those crevices. You can wipe it back as much or as little as you want. Keep your wipes going in the same direction, and you get this nice linear striate effect, and then you can layer the colors to get even more interest and depth and dimension. All right, you guys. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and head out. Thank you guys for being patient through technical difficulties tonight. I'm super sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure that one. Okay. Um, but you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching tonight. And uh, I will get pics of this posted for you guys. If you guys want to purchase anything I used um, tonight in this video, which was the Dixie Bell drop cloth, our satin clear coat, and then we did a wash of gravel road. And then we added some gold gilding wax over the top. Um, you can order those through the link that's in the post. I'll put it in the description all over on YouTube and uh, you guys can find those there. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Good night. Oh yeah, that looks good if I do say so myself. <laughs>